Hello, my name is Ronald Ochoa. I am research entomologist of the Systematic Entomology Laboratory and a curator of the Smithsonian National Mite Collection at Pennsfield, Maryland. I work with plant feeding mites at the United States Department of Agriculture. The genus Brevipalpus, a hard fight. The description how important the genus Brevipalpus was more or less given in 1949 by McGregor, as you can read here. The truth is that almost 63 years later, we still battle with identification and who is Brevipalpus phoenicis. The species in the genus Brevipalpus are very important because several of them are associated with viruses. And depends on the plan is the symptomatology, but also the type of virus. There are several species involucrated with viruses. Three complexes, Californicus, Ovatus, and Phenesis. We were able to study holotypes, paratypes, materials from all around the world. And we are using many different techniques to study them, be DIC, differential interface contrast, be phase contrast, and low temperature scanning electron microscope to try to identify who are the species involved specifically in the genus Brevipalpus. The Brevipalpus phenesis is a complex. There are approximately 12 different species involved in this. Citrus is definitely the preferred host of many of them. And there are two species that were synonymized in the past that definitely are valid species. Brevipalpus jodersides and Brevipalpus papayensis. Now, to complicate the issue, usually when we are collecting Brevipalpus, we can collect a host plant that can have mists of populations. It is the correct morphology terminology is a key to identify these mites. The understanding of the presence of ventral plates, genital plate, anal plate also is key to separate the species. You need to have a good understanding of the morphology of these mites if you want to identify them to the level of the species. They are heavily ornamented. The reticulations can have different shapes. Can be reticular, ovalate, rounded, subquadrate. De depends of the quantity and the shape that will help you to identify a species. Another problem that we have is because they are flat ventrally, are really hard to understand how they are in the lateral view. However, here you can have a, you, however here you can see a very nice photo of a lateral position of a previpalpus mite, and you can see how the hump over the body is. This hump can change in position, sometimes can be very posterior, sometimes can be in the middle, or sometimes can be divided into two different humps, and that also helps to identify species. We focus in all these areas that you can see here, in particular one in the area that is on red. The shape and the lines of the tegumens are key to identify the species. Also important is the presence of the solenidia. The quantity of solenidia and tarsus too, in particular, is key to separate the different groups. We are trying to use many different techniques to understand these mites. A new technique is called confocal microscopy. And perhaps with confocal microscopy, we will be able to understand more about the different characters, not only external, but also internal. The pulps are linear, and the number of cities at the end of the pulp are also key to separate the different groups in the genus Brevipalpus. The stylets are long, and they are serrate at the end. 
Now, I want to call your attention to these two photos that you are looking right now. Now, if we look very careful to this photo here, we'll see two species, Bripalpus jodersi and Bripalpus phenicis. Both mice are very similar. However, put special attention to the Paltarsus city, the dorsal city here. In jodersi is slender, when in Bripalpus phenicis is open palmated or leaf-like. That is key to separate these two species. Here are more characters to help you to separate Bripalpus jodersi from Bripalpus phenicis. Again, the red arrows in the top indicating the different shape of the palpal city. And on the lower area, the spermatica. As you can see clearly, there are two different spermaticas. One has a shape of a peanut with two projections in either side, when the other one looks like almost like a zika. Other species are also easy to separate by the presence or absence of city F2. Phenicis and ovovatus have six pairs of cities in the dorsal air, in the opistosoma dorsal area, when Californicus and cuniatus have seven pairs of city in the dorsal lateral area of the opistosoma. We are using microplates. These are the wax-like structures that cover the mite, and that help us to separate the different species by the shape of these microplates that some of them look like cookies with little diagrams or shapes of lines over them. They are specific so far. And they can peel off easily. All these mites that you see right now are called Bripalpus phenicis. However, they are not the same species. There are several. Again, as I mentioned, there are around 12 different and now we will look at them more careful. Bripalpus phenicis, sensu stricto, six pairs of cities, F2 is absent, tarsus with two solenidia, one solenidia and two city on the distal segment of the palpus. This one that you see in red color is the Bripalpus phenicis collected from palps from Netherlands. Here are their characters. As you can see, look the lines inside the genital plate. Look the lines and the shape of the reticles in the ventral plate too. And in the corner, you can see the microplates. Look how the diagrams or striations or linear projections over the microplates are set up. Also, on the palm, again, look the city of the paltarsus. Here we are comparing Bripalpus phenicis with another real Bripalpus phenicis that were located in Costa Rica on citrus. Same mite. Now, if we compare them with Bripalpus jodersi, we'll notice that this mite in the prodorsum is more reticulated laterally. Also in the opistosoma, you can see two strong groups in the central area of the opistosoma. The pal city, more linear. And the microplates, more simple. And sure, this spermatica. Under DIC, this is what you will see. But to understand the mites, also we need to understand what happened with the mite? How the body shows the colors when it's a young female and goes to adult female. This is key as unfortunately in some countries and some papers has been describing the different tones of colors of the mites as a different species. Again, it's always good to do comparisons with other mites in, under DIC. Here we have Bripalpus jodersi and Bripalpus papayensis. 
The one that says Netherlands is pre palpus phoenicis, sensus stricto. You can see lower the one that says Bridipalpus the other side, that is the type of species. And also you can see Bridipalpus the other side from Australia, Texas, Mexico, and Brazil. And you can see both still sharing the characters over the dorsum of the opistosoma. In the right lower corner, we see Bridipalpus papagensis. That is a species that is located at the moment in Hawaii. Here, again, more photos to help you to separate Bridipalpus the other side and Phenesis. Let's go in detail. Phenesis, the other side, and two undescribed species in the lower area. You can see how the central area is ornamented. Notice how smooth is the area laterally in the, close to the base of the legs. Now on the opistosoma, phoenix is on the other side, and the undescribed species in the lower area. And now, just look into the ventral plates and genital plates, look all this set of these five species. Bripalpus phoenix, Bripalpus the other side, and Bripalpus papayensis. In Bripalpus papayensis, look the ventral plate you can see that the ventral plate have some of the cells going longitudinal, going down, when all the other ones are going horizontal. Here is Brevipalpus papayensis. It's a very robust mite with very strong groups over the opistosoma. Again, microplates have been key to separate these species. But you have another tool to separate the species, and it is the spermatica. Be familiar with the spermaticas. Immatures are important. Observe the kind of type of cities in the immatures, especially the E3, F2, F3, H2, H1. There is variation between them. Prepalpus californicus is another group. This is a big complex with many different variations of tones and very particular shape of the body as is more elongated than the phenesis groups. Here this is hysterosoma has seven pairs of city, including F2 is present. Tarsus 2 with two solenidia, one solenidia and two city on the distal segment of the pulp. And the group with 12 known species, Ambripalpus californicus sensolatu, may represent 14 different species. Here are the microplates and the dorsum. Look how beautiful is that reticulation. Ecology and biology is important in this group, where the feeds, where it's located, which kind of major fruit crops are, is associated. All that is key character, but also start to look also on the eggs. The shape of the eggs, the cover of the wax over the egg, may help us to separate this species complex. The larvae is key also. And again, the immatures, the type of cities in the immatures, especially the dorsal laterals, F2, F3, H2, H1, is key to understand this group. Repalpus ovovatus, this is one of the best known group and perhaps the oldest species described in the genus Brevipalpus. Hysterosoma with six pair hysterosoma with six pairs of CD, F2 is absent, Tarsus 2 with one solenidia. One solenidia and two CD on distal segment of the palpus. The group have around 12 valid species. However, the one that is important for us is just ovovatus, and is a pest usually in greenhouses conditions or ornamentals. You can see here his microplates and the egg. You can see here the egg and its microplates. 
Ripalpus chilensis is an important species in the group of Ovovatus. This one is completely reticulated, and especially in the central areas. Here we can see the microplace of Ripalpus chilensis. The last group, Ripalpus cuniatus, is the less known. However, there is one species very important for us, and it's Ripalpus lewisii as this species is common on citrus in California. Seven pairs of city, F2 is present. Tarsus two with one solenidia, one solenidia and two city in the, on the distal segment of the palpus. And the group is the biggest one, with 65 species known. All this information you can go over and review at Flat Mines of the World website. Over there, you will have different windows that you can go over the main characters of not only the family Tenipalpidae, but also in detail over the Brevipalpus. You can compare and see the advantages of using phase contrast and DIC to study these mites. And also, you will have a Lucy key that you can use freely to identify these species and go over these variations. In conclusion, we found that there are around 13 new morphological traits that can be used with a TIC or face contrast microscope based on the findings on LTSEM. The patterns, the shapes, the form of the series is key, and also the observation on the immatures is key to separate many of the complex species. Ripalpus californicus is definitely a group that we will study, especially now that we know that it's associated with viruses too and the use of nuclear techniques will be important for the understanding of this complex and these groups in the future. Questions? How can I differentiate quickly between Californicus and Phenesis groups? The Brevipalpus Californicus group can be easily separated from the Brevipalpus Phenesis group by the presence or absence of CDF2. Prepalpus californicus group has F2. Prepalpus phenicis group does not have F2. What role do brevipalpus mites play in leprosis transmission? Prepalpus mites has been associated with several viruses on plants. Prepalpus phenicis group has been associated with leprosis virus. However, Prepalpus the other side is apparently the mite that carry cytoplasmatic leprosis virus, when Brevipalpus californicus has been associated with nuclear leprosis virus.